So you got a ham radio, you want to find where the contacts are, what mode are they using, which map do I use, should I use this one, should I use this one, should I use this one, what's it all mean? Let me show you right here on ham radio concepts. Ham Radio Concepts is brought to you by HamRadioPrep.com. It's never been easier to learn about ham radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit HamRadioPrep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, HamRadioPrep.com. There are three different sources or websites that I use to make the decisions on where there is active propagation. I'm going to preference this with this. This is not suggested atmospheric conditions based on your location and the band. These three sites that I'm going to show you collectively will give you proof on what is happening on that band with proof on contacts being made and I'm going to show you why there's three websites here the first one is a PSK reporter info these are all in the description of the video go down and, and click on it the second one is dxmaps.com the third one is aprs.menolink.org okay we're going to start with this one first dxmaps.com I've been using this for years the contest for VHF is now over as of 2 p.m. My, my time. It's 3.05, okay? But you can see, now, now I've been on six meters the entire month of June so far. It's June 12th, and for the, every day on June, I've been on six meters mobile, working Canada and Mexico mobile, a bunch of stateside contacts. But I want you to see something. What you're looking at on this map is active reported spots of who has made contact to where on what mode okay when you go to this website it may default to 50 megahertz but you could choose 28 all the way up here to aprs and then you can go over here to the left and go to hf okay so for instance let's go to 20 look at this the bands are dead right the bands are dead i've been hearing this for years i'm tired of hearing it Guy told me the other day, uh, yeah, well, uh, HF has been in the toilet the last two years. No, it hasn't because I make contacts all day long. Don't tell me it's in the toilet. You may be in a bad area. You may have an antenna that's just not good. But I'm going to show you. This is proof. Now, for instance, 20 meters. All of these have been generated down here by this. Send this is called a DX cluster. Okay. Back in my day, DX clusters also existed via APRS on two meters. So there were DX clusters. I always wanted to do it too. A DX cluster can be sent and then it would, it would, it would integrate with APRS. So you'd have an APRS capable handheld. And these things would come out all the time on your handheld and show you the, the recent spots on the cluster. And that was pretty cool because you could see when the band opens. So if I were to, which I did before this weekend, your call sign your locator, the frequency, the DX call, and the DX locator. DX, yes, DX. But people are using this in the United States. So they wouldn't be considered DX, but they are showing a spot. And then you can choose the propagation mode. If you knew it was moon bounce, if you knew it was backscatter or sporadic ease, if you knew it was a satellite, you know, or tropospheric ducting. Well, I just choose unknown. But when you click send spot, it draws a line from your call sign to wherever you made the contact. And if you go up here to list, the list will tell you in a list form, all this on 20 meters that you're looking at on this map happens to be CW. And this is all the stations, all the contacts, all the, the, uh, the contacts that are made and the distance, you know, 1,200 miles, 286 miles, 4,569 miles, and the CQ, the words per minute, and the signal report right now it just so happens look there's one here psk 31 there's some ft8 there's one on sideband it will tell you what mode they're using so this is a proven spot and then you have whisper down here weak signal propagation reporter now if you don't put a spot in here when you make a contact then it's not going to count to anybody that's looking on this map 
So the more people that register to this site, and you know, this is free to register. There, there is no spam. I've never gotten any spam whatsoever, but you have to be logged in to send a spot to the cluster. And I've, I, I registered like 12 years ago. So I think it used to be called DX Robot. I'm not sure, I think. Um, this is run solely on donations. So don't send me a donation. I love donations, but send it to them because they are running this site for years on donations. It's free. They're not marketing you. They're not spamming you or selling your email. Okay. So let's go back up here for the VHF contest weekend. We're going to go VHF and up 50 megahertz. Now there's still, I turned the radio on a little bit ago. There's still six meter activity. And if we zoom in, look, these are all the contacts being made and look at a lot of the international DX and look at all of Europe. And, and for those who want to challenge me, because this comment has come in just countless times over the last five years, I've never heard a single contact on six meters. Uh, six meters has been dead since I was 17 in 1972. No, it's not because I was on six meters all weekend. Okay. I'm not telling you you don't know what you're doing. I'm telling you that there's something wrong, okay? Here is the six meter contacts in Europe and some, you know, um, if we go to list form here, here are the six meter contacts. Look, mostly FT8. So that's why I jumped on FT8 because I made a lot of them. This Delta Kilo 8 station has been making contacts all day. You got over here in the US and then you got some Sierra Mike 7, Echo Golf Mike, you know, 1500 miles, a lot of FT8. And then you look in here, you'll have some sideband, right? So Mike five Bravo extra Bravo to Charlie uniform three alpha Charlie. That was 1500 miles on phone. You know, a lot of this. Okay. This, this, this is updated real time, real time information. So that is what I want to show you here. Let me go to two meters real quick because I want to show you there is still look at the two meter action in Europe. Okay. And if I go to list, you're going to see, a lot of FT8. That's what I did on two meters on this contest this weekend was FT8. And people told me they did not have any idea that you can do FT8. And would you know, I met like seven people between here in Melbourne and Port St. Lucie in Orlando that are on FT8 on two meters. Single sideband radio. I was on 10 watts. Okay. I used the uh, radio waves Quasar for half the day and the uh, Kushcraft 13 element the other half the day. Made some FT8 contacts on two meters. That's great for the ICOM 9700, for the ICOM 705, for the ICOM 7100. Those radios will all do VHF and 440 UHF on single sideband CW AM, including digital modes like FT8. So if we go back here, we'll go over here to uh, the US and it seems that there's still a lot of people. You know why? Because they, they heard the people come on on the contest weekend that they didn't know existed like me. I met people in Melbourne. I had no idea who they were, never knew they were there, but they came out for that contest weekend. And here they are making contacts across. Look, look how far that is on two meters. Look at this W three SQ. He's um, 924 miles away from me. But then, you know, if you look at the, the, well, I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember how to see the distance between the two. Well, here W five AFY. Let's look for him. W5AFY. So look, 1,200 mile, 1,300 mile contacts. Look at this, 1,400 miles on two meters. So two meters is well and alive. Let's see if anybody did anything on UHF. Nope. Okay. Some here. Let's go to a map here. 450 megahertz. Not in the US. Over here in Europe. So you have some on UHF as well. And look, they're talking country to country here in the US or Europe. All right. So the next site I want to show you is this one here. This is VHF propagation map. Now I use this every day. If you're on my Facebook, I do send uh, alerts out when I see that this is out of control and out of control is like a picture. Like you see here, this was at two 30 in the morning. Um, another one that was, you know, later in the day or in the, in the early morning, those, what they represent, what do you see here? This is not a predicted solar index. This is using, and I think this was run by a school or still is funded by a school, Mountain Lake, it used to be called Mountain Lake K-12. I'm not sure the stats of it now. But when I, when I look at this, this is for VHF. Now this is, these are all APRS beacons. 
that have been picked up from one digit Peter to another, and it suggests, hey, this station is 900 miles away. We might have some two meter tropospheric activity or temperature inversion or ducting or sporadic ease or whatever you want to call it. And it will start putting things like this here. See, so if you look up here, uh, here over in Albuquerque, New Mexico, K5 DIG, and that was apparently the Digipeter, K5 DIG, and that Digipeter was picked up at W7MOT-10. And it said, hey, wow, I'm in Arizona, you're in New Mexico, there's a lot of activity here. And, and as this happens more and more, it grows, like you see over here. You can see right now, and, and I will tell you, when I have been on a on on when I've seen this website like this and I've been on two meters, I have worked up into North Carolina, South Carolina, Atlanta, Alabama, across the Gulf to Texas and Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I have talked on those mobile and with a with a, uh, a horizontal beam back in the day when I had my 9700. So at the same time, when this happens. I will prove it this way that TV stations on my over the air HD TV antenna, I have scanned for TV channels when it happened and was watching channels in Alabama and Georgia. Now, of course, in the morning when that goes away, you got to rescan and get rid of those because they won't come in again. But this is real time. This is actual signals and packets that had been picked up hundreds of miles away. That's a good indication that it's time to get on two meters. Sometimes 220, sometimes UHF. Depends on how the atmosphere and the ionosphere is working. So this is all proof, okay? And there's not much really on the site to see other than the call signs, and these are all automated. So nobody's putting these in. The computer system and the digipeters are putting these in, and those generate propagation reports for us as spots to show that there is. You can be here in close to Charleston with a beam facing this way and talk to somebody in Nebraska just because these are all in here. Yes, it will happen. It can happen. It has happened. Okay. The third one I want to talk about is this one here. This is PSKReporter.info. And what this is doing is using uh, different digital modes on different bands to determine where your signal is going. So if I go like this, six meters, from KJ4YZI using FT8 of the last 24 hours. I hit go. This was all the FT8. That's where all my FT8 had went. So you can see that automated stations were picking up three hours ago. You can see three hours ago that um, that is 2,355 miles. So I knew that it looks like I had propagation this way. Okay, I was using a horizontal loop. But if I had a beam and face this way, or if I had a different antenna, you may have seen it up here. Okay, 17 hours ago, uh, 1,099 miles, I was picked up by W9XB, uh, you know, reverse beacon network, if you want to call it. And if I go like this to two meters, two meters, last 24 hours, hit go. There was a couple here, if I zoom in, that actually picked up my FT8 signal. That was uh, 34 miles, and that was 18 miles. Now, that you know what you saw as i showed you on here when it was all red down here was not happening this weekend that's unfortunate because every day i've seen it i was listening to fm radio stations up in the panhandle fm radio stations up in georgia and on my car stereo and you could tell when it blanks out a station in orlando and it's coming in from new orleans you know the band is hot that's when it's time to get on two meters Six, uh, well, I'm going to say the this map right here is mainly two meters, but 220 has been affected with this map as well. But this right here will give you an idea. If you want to test an antenna, you use one watt, five watts. You get on six meters or 20 meters. Let's see here. 20 meters. Um, I'm not going to put my call sign in. Let's just go like this. 24 hours. You want to see what FT8 has had in 24 hours. Anyone. Here we go. Look at the look. Watch it. Look, look at it. Look at the FT8 in the last 24 hours on 20 meters. It's all there, and a lot of it has gone 
to your up. Look at the look at the DX on FT8 on 20 meters. So that's the third one, pskreporter.info. Um, another real time. If it detects your transceiver transmitting from the final output stage of your amplifier or radio, and it's going over the air, it will pop up on the map if it's detected. This is not a solar X index or K index or or this is this should be this way. This day, no, this is real. Ooh, it's time to get these antennas down. The storms are rolling in, but I hope you enjoyed that information but there's one more thing that i didn't tell you i'll tell you right now the final way to find propagation and contacts is to call cq that's it i still didn't care if it said two meters wasn't open in florida and i still made contacts always call cq if the maps show that there's nothing there give it a chance call cq and see what you come up with you never know who hasn't spotted on that network, on that cluster, and who's sitting there waiting to listen and talk to you. More videos are on the way. Thanks so much, guys. You guys are amazing. 7-3, KJ4YZI.